Well, good morning and welcome to today's Daily Devotions. This morning we come to the end of Book One of the Psalms. I don't know if you realise that the Psalms are broken into five different collections of, of prayers and songs. And this morning we come um, with Psalm 41 to the end of that first book. So if you have a Bible with you, then open it up to Psalm 41. You can follow along as I read it now. Blessed are those who have regard for the weak. The Lord delivers them in tr- times of trouble. The Lord protects and preserves them. They are counted among the blessed in the land. He does not give them over to the desire of their foes. The Lord sustains them on their sick bed and restores them from their bed of illness. I said, have mercy on me, Lord. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice. When will he die and his name perish? When one of them comes to see me, he speaks falsely while his heart gathers slander. Then he goes out and spreads it around. All my enemies whisper together against me. They imagine the worst for me, saying, A vile disease has afflicted him. He will never get up from the place where he lies. Even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread, has turned against me. But may you have mercy on me, Lord. Raise me up, that I may repay them. I know that you are pleased with me, for my enemy does not triumph over me. Because of my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, for ever, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. So as we come to the end of book one, um, we have a psalm that, that brings together so many of the themes that we've been used to hearing in these uh, prayers of David throughout the, the first book of Psalms. Uh, we have David facing sickness. We have David facing kind of persecution and opposition from his enemies. We have David wrestling with his own sin and, and how that can be dealt with. But we also have David uh, clinging on to God in, in the middle of all these difficulties that he's facing and these problems that, um, that he's going through. And actually, as we are right here at the end of this book, we, we see some real connections with the, the very beginning of the book. Um, Psalm 41 and Psalm 1 kind of connect and talk to each other in a few really interesting ways. Um, And so you can see at the very beginning, it it talks about those who are blessed. And this is actually how Psalm 1 itself starts. At the very beginning of the Psalms, we we read this. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. The Psalms open up with this vision of the blessed person, uh, the person whose life is kind of well-rounded, is, is whole, it, whole is, is kind of um, full. Someone who, who is living life the way that God always intended it to be lived. And this person is depicted in, in the beginning of the book of Psalms as someone who, who just drinks in God's word, who meditates on it all day long. They, they love to hear God speak and to respond. And this is kind of balanced out and, and built upon in, in Psalm 41, where we see that, that someone who is blessed is also someone who, look at Psalm 41 verse 1, is someone who has regard for the weak. And this is a really helpful um, kind of balancing out here. We might read Psalm 1 and, and think that it's describing just the kind of bookish person who likes to sit in a comfy chair with, with a, a Bible commentary or with their headphones on listening to a sermon. Um, but it's more than that, isn't it? It's someone who, who, who listens to God's word, but is transformed by God's word. It's not the kind of person that, that James describes in the New Testament who just hears God's word, but, but never lets it filter down to affect the person that they are. We're meant to be people who, who listen intently to God's word and are transformed to, to live lives characterized by compassion and justice. That's what a blessed life looks like. That is the kind of life that we're called to. That is what life is is meant to be lived like, a life of of wholeness. And so as we go through the psalm, um, we see all these challenges that David's facing. And I guess this is what the the walk of faith is all about. David is is not well. David is is being kind of got at by his enemies. David is battling sin. In some ways you you think, well, how how is he blessed? But, But David is confident. Uh, the, the blessed person, even in the middle of all those things, is the one who hears God's word and is transformed by that word. 
to be a person of justice, a person of compassion. That is what a blessed person looks like. And despite the problems that David's going through at the moment, he's confident that that is the kind of person that God will ultimately vindicate. We see that in verse 10, don't we? Despite all these things going on, even his friends have turned against him, the people who, who shared bread with him. But in verse 10, he says, but, but may you have mercy on me, Lord. He's confident that, that in the end, God will vindicate him. In the end, he'll see God's justice play out in the world. And actually, we see this more clearly than, than anywhere else in the life of Jesus. Uh, Jesus himself alludes to this psalm. He, he quotes a bit of this psalm um, in John chapter 13, uh, where he's describing the way that Judas will betray him after sharing bread with him. Uh, and this psalm actually is a really good portrait of what happened to Jesus, isn't it? Uh, Jesus, who was betrayed uh, by his friends. Jesus, who was persecuted by his enemies. And Jesus, who, who bore sin, not his own sin, but our sin. As he died on the cross. And so much of what we see uh, depicted at the end of the Gospels there with the death of Jesus and, and his arrest and everything else that goes with it, it seems like Jesus isn't blessed here, is it? Uh, is he? Uh, but actually we see as the, as the Gospels unfold, as they come to their conclusion, that he is blessed. The one Jesus who, who, who trusts in God's word, the one who has regard for the weak, this Jesus is the one who God has mercy on. Despite all the, the suffering that he goes through, God demonstrates his justice in his life. He vindicates him as he raises him from the dead. And so as we look at this psalm, and as we think of the life of Jesus, my hope this morning is that it will give us confidence, give us the eyes of faith to see that the truly blessed life, as Jesus teaches us and shows us, is the one that is saturated in God's word. And a life where that word is, is transforming the person to make them a person of compassion, a person of justice. So, so shall we pray now that that would be the case in our lives? We will have so much room to improve, don't we? So much transformation that still needs to happen. So let's pray that that will happen in us um, and in us as a community as well. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this vision of human life that we get from the book of Psalms, of, of full human life, of whole human life, of life that is saturated in God's word and life where that word is changing us from the inside to be people of compassion, people of justice, people of action. And so, Lord, we pray that we would see that in each of us. Lord, you know us. You know that just like David prays here, we carry sin. Uh, just like David describes here, um, we struggle with our own inadequacy. And so we pray that you would fill us again by your spirit and your spirit would help us to be attentive to your word. And as we listen to you, as we meditate on that word day by day, would you change us? Would you make us people who have regard for the weak? Would you make our lives, lives of compassion and lives of justice? Lord, we pray that you would do this in us as individuals and also in us as a church community. For the advancement of your kingdom and for your glory, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.